why do we have two narratives among the Jews? There are Jews who are talking about the homeland and there are Jews who are speaking against it. What connection do they have with the Palestinians? As a Jewish person, I'm not an exception. I'm not uh, trying to say that I'm so much better than anybody else. Uh, to be Jewish, you don't have to be Zionist. Zionism was against the Jewish religion. Dr. Abraham, could you explain or define what Zionism actually is? And then, you know, who are the Ashkenazi Jews? A segment of the uh, Jewish people who became a nation in uh, Europe, a nationality <laughs> called Ashkenazim. My first language is Yiddish. Very few uh, Jewish people speak this language anymore because the Zionists tried to destroy our language because they only wanted Hebrew to be the language of the state. I just wanted to uh, clarify this point here and please correct me if I'm wrong. Zionism is actually those people who believe uh, in the state of Israel, right? And, and it's not necessary that they're Jews. They can be Christians as well, as you just said, right? You can begin with that, yes. All right. Mm. But there's much, much more to it than that. A very important part of your life spent in uh, the direct activism with the Palestinian people on ground. What are the on ground realities in terms of uh, what the daily people face over there? We were maintaining the unity and the revolt of the Palestinians against the occupation, even though we were so weak. But it was working anyway. How have they been able to lobby in some place, in somewhere like uh, Canada and the U.S.? They don't have academic freedom. The authorities who who have the power are susceptible to being pressured by the Zionists because they're afraid of being criticized for being anti-Semitic. आप लोगों ने discussion सुनी डॉक्टर इब्राहिम वाइसफेल की और मैं चाह रहा हूँ कि हम इस पे थोड़ा सा खास तौर पे हम आस पे ही आपकी इसमें इंशाल्लाह कुछ तब्शा लेना चाह रहा हूँ। मैं एक ऐसे ग्रुप में था जिसमें मैं रिसर्च करना चाह रहा था देखना चाह रहा था इसराइल के बारे में तो मैंने ऑनलाइन इंट्रैक्ट किया फेसबुक पे तो मुझे लोगों ने कुछ ने रिस्पॉन्ड किया कि यहाँ पर ऐसे लोग भी हैं जो कि यहूदी हैं लेकिन वो फ़लस्तीन के हक में बोलते हैं और इसराइल को वो नहीं मानते ऑब्वियसली अगर हम उसको ऑब्जेक्टिवली देखेंगे तो हम शायद कहेंगे कि जाइनस जो है वो ज़्यादा बुरा है क्योंकि जो उसका आइडिया है वो ग्राउंड रियलिटीज़ में जुल्म में क्रिएट होता है अच्छा मैं इस बारे में ना डॉक्टर से थोड़ा सा डिसग्री करूँगा डॉक्टर इज सीमिंग लिटल मोर ऑप्टमिस्टिक ठीक है आई डोंट नो वाई लेकिन मुझे ये चीज़ें अभी इस तरह नज़र नहीं आ रही मुझे लग रहा है कि अभी भी उनके पास ज़्यादा पावर है अभी भी उनके पास ज़्यादा इन्फ्लुंस है अब इसके दो आउटकम हो सकते हैं आइजर डिज़ास्टरस होगा क्योंकि वो वॉरफेयर वाला या फिर ये होगा कि फिर एक आध उनको गिव इन करना पड़ेगा इंटरनेशनल प्रेशर के हाँ और वो एक साइड पर लेगा السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دا شو آج کا جو ہمارا سیشن ہے اٹس گوئنگ ٹو بی اباؤٹ زائنزم اینڈ آج ہم بات کریں گے آج کل کے موجودہ حالات کے تناظر میں زائنزم کے حوالے سے زائنزم کیا ہے اور زائنسٹ کون لوگ ہیں اور اسرائیل اسٹیٹ کا زائنس کے ساتھ کیا تعلق ہے اور جوز کا تعلق زائنزم کے ساتھ کیا ہے کیا جوز اور زائنس ایک جیسے لوگ ہیں یہ ان دونوں میں فرق ہے اور کیا کچھ ایسے جوز بھی ایگزٹ کرتے ہیں جو کہ اسرائیل کے خلاف بولنے والے ہیں اور فلسطینیوں کے حق میں بولتے ہیں تو اس حوالے سے آج ہماری ڈسکشن ہوگی میرے ساتھ جو میرے پینلسٹ ہیں ان میں ایز یوزول برادر احمد خان برادر حماس اشرف اور اسی طریقے سے آج ہم ایک انٹرنیشنل گیسٹ کو بھی آن بورڈ لیں گے کینیڈین ایک اکیڈیمک ڈاکٹر ابراہم وائس فیلڈ اور اس سے پہلے کہ ہم ڈاکٹر ابراہم وائس فیلڈ کو آن لائن لیں اور ان سے ڈسکشن کریں میں تھوڑا سا بریف انٹروڈکشن ان کا کروانا چاہتا ہوں ڈاکٹر ابراہم وائس فیلڈ جو ہیں یہ بیسکلی اینٹی زائنسٹ موومنٹ کے ون آف دی یعنی آپ سمجھ لیں کرٹیک کے وجہ سے مشہور ہیں اور ان کی جو فیملی ہے ہی از ایکچولی فرام دا فیملی جس میں ان کے ہولو کاسٹ سروائیورس کی فیملی میں سے ہیں اور ان کی خاص طور پہ ہی از این آتھر آف کورس ایک پاپولر اکیڈیمک ہیں اس حوالے سے اور انہوں نے نیومرس انٹرنیشنل کانفرنسز میں ریسرچ پیپرس پڑھے ہیں اور بہت سے پروٹیسٹ کیے ہیں پیلسٹینینس کے حق میں اور اینٹی زائنسٹ جو ہیں خاص طور پہ ان کے حوالے سے ان کا کافی زیادہ کام ہے بہت سی جو ہیں فارمز ہیں ان کا یہ پارٹ ہے ان میں والنٹیئر کرتے رہتے ہیں اسی طریقے سے آن دا گراؤنڈ انہوں نے بہت زیادہ ہی ہیز اے ہسٹری آف لائک مور دین ففٹی ایئرس آن دا فیلڈ جہاں پہ انہوں نے آن دا گراؤنڈ جا کے کام کیا وہاں پہ پیلسٹین اور جو ہیں مسلمانوں کے حق میں انہوں نے آواز اٹھائی اور آبویسلی زائنس جو زائنس جو موومنٹ ہے اس کے خلاف انہوں نے بہت سا کام کیا ان کی پی ایچ ڈی کا تھیسز بھی اسی اسی موضوع پر ہے ایک پولیٹیکل سائنٹسٹ ہیں سو ان شاء اللہ ویل ٹیک دم ویل ٹیک ہیم آن بورڈ رائٹ ناؤ اینڈ ویل ہیو اے ڈسکشن ود ہیم آن 
the topic of Zionism. So, uh, Dr. Abraham, welcome to the show today. I would like to, you know, for our audience uh, to give uh, a brief introduction of yourself, especially things that are, you know, the work that you're doing right now and currently, uh, you know, um, especially talking about the anti-Zionism, for example, what is the popular narrative that you have um, regarding the anti-Zionism? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I began uh, to be active in solidarity with the Palestinian people since uh, an early age. Uh, in uh, 1968, we first started to demonstrate against the occupation of the West Bank because we knew that the uh, Zionist uh, governments you know, were lying and that they intended to maintain an occupation of as much territory as possible. <laughs> and therefore, we began to protest against this. And I was uh, perhaps the first Jewish person in uh, North America to speak in solidarity at a Palestinian demonstration in 1968. Uh, since then, uh, I've organized uh, a, a civil society Jewish movement against Zionism. And uh, also during the war in Lebanon in 1982-85, I worked with uh, the ambassador to Canada, Dr. Uh, Abdul Abdullah, uh, to... Uh, uh, fight against uh, the war and I, and I think that our efforts you know did have some impact and uh, the documentary study that I wrote on the massacre of Sabra Shatila in Lebanon uh, was published uh, after and is now uh, a reference book on uh, what happened uh, during uh, General Sharon of Israel and mm. his occupation of Lebanon and his collaboration with Phalanges in organizing the massacre of Sabra Shatila of 3,000 uh, Palestinians, you know, in three days. Incredible. All right, uh, Dr. Abraham, uh, it's really nice to see your, your effort and the, the, the way you're doing. Now, what, you know, I would like to start our conversation with a very basic question. And this is a question that I'm actually, you know, this is a common question that we have among Muslims, especially um, if you're talking about my community in Pakistan here. You know, whenever we talk about the uh, Jewish people, or the Jews, you can say, uh, it's really strange for us to know that there are people and there is a significant number of people who are actually against the state of Israel and they're speaking in the favor of Palestinians to some extent, especially the Muslims and the atrocities that are being, uh, you know, currently carried out against the Palestinians. So there is a question, a very, uh, you know, a very valid question, I think, that what is the reason behind this? Why do we have two narratives among the Jews where there are Jews who are talking about the homeland, especially Israel, and there are Jews who are speaking against it? Uh, so what is the reason? Why are they speaking against this? I mean, what connection do they have with the Palestinians? Is it just because they speak against the oppression or are there uh, religious reasons or anything else? You know, so this is a very common question that we have. So I would like to know what your thoughts are about this, please. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. As a Jewish person, I'm not an exception. I'm not uh, trying to say that I'm so much better than anybody else. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying that <coughs> there is a, a Jewish uh, anti-Zionist tradition, which mm -hmm. I uh, learned from my mother because she was uh, a Jewish Bundist who escaped from the uh, Warsaw Ghetto under the Nazi occupation. All right. And uh, mm -hmm. she taught me that uh, to be Jewish, you don't have to be Zionist. In fact, and, um, and my father, who was uh, very religious, uh, taught me that uh, Zionism was against the Jewish religion. Mm. Because uh, Judaism teaches uh, Jewish people to be uh, pacifist, to be right. in favor of peace, and not mm. to be in favor of war. And uh, my mother taught me that uh, the uh, Jewish Bundist movement that she was active in was a movement for the liberation of the Jewish people, but refused to accept Zionism as a way to liberate the Jewish people. Because as is known, uh, the Jewish people in Europe were very oppressed. And in fact, right. uh, most of my parents' families were killed in the Holocaust. Right. That's all true. But at that time, the reason why the Jewish people were living in Europe is because like my parents who are Polish, they considered Poland to be their homeland. They considered right. themselves to be Polish. They didn't want to be, uh, leave their own homeland or be kicked out by, in their own homeland you know, by some fascists. So they stayed and they fought, and eventually they won, but at a terrible cost. So uh, you know, the origin of the Jewish people is not in the land of uh, what was Canaan at that time. Mm. The origin right. of the Jewish people was in the Sinai, 
with Musa, Moses, and he was not even a king. He was like a, 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 a he was like a, a you know a, a, a liberator, a national liberator, and the way they organized themselves at that time was in national assemblies. And there were 35 such national assemblies in the Sinai of the people with delegates from each of the tribes, etc. So this actual original structure yeah. of the Jewish people was as a religion and as a people, but not as a land, not as a state, and not as a kingdom. So the Zionism has taken some of the worst aspects of, of Jewish history and turned yeah. it into uh, uh, a dogma, an ideology, uh, which is uh, very dangerous because it places the interests of right. one group <laughs> above that of any other group. And that includes uh, the interests of the Ashkenazim, above that of the Mizrahim, who are treated as a lower caste, hmm. and, and includes uh, the Ashkenazim control, continuing control of the... Dr. Abraham, uh, sorry, so, sorry to uh, cut, cut you off, uh, but for our audience, could you explain or define in uh, as uh, short of words as you can what Zionism actually is? And then, you know, who are the Ashkenazi Jews? Ashkenazi are uh, the European Jews. Ashkenazi in Hebrew means German. So, mm. uh, you know, there's a, a, a segment of the uh, Jewish people who became a nation in uh, Europe, mm -hmm. a nationality called Ashkenazim, and, uh, you know, developed around the river Ruhr, where uh, German was adopted as a daily language and uh, became a dialect you know, called Yiddish. So my first language is Yiddish. And uh, very few uh, Jewish people speak this language anymore because the Zionists tried to destroy our language because they only wanted Hebrew to be the language of the state. And so they wouldn't tolerate any other language, neither yeah. Yiddish nor Ladino of the, of the Spanish Jewish uh, population that merged with the Mizrahim or Arabic. You know, no other language was uh, allowed by the Zionism. Zionism was a philosophy that was developed by the Christian Protestant movement which wanted to expel the Jewish people from their countries because they wanted to make a Christian nation state. They wanted to expel the Jews of Europe to Palestine to uh, make a colony for one empire or the other. Either Oliver Cromwell from the English Empire or Napoleon for the French Empire wanted to mm. do the same thing. But the Jewish people always resisted. They always refused to do so because they wanted to remain in their homeland where they were living, of course. But now the Zionists have had, uh, and still do, have control over a, a large part of the Jewish people because the Jewish Bundist uh, movement, of which my mother was a member of, was the strongest movement at that time. And they, <clears throat> in the last uh, Jewish municipal elections in Warsaw, the Jewish Bund won 17 out of 20 seats. The hmm. Zionists only represented 8% of the Jewish people at that time. But after the Holocaust, all of those uh, anti-Zionists you know, were lost because uh, they were also socialists generally, and uh, the Nazis uh, uh, sought to kill as many such uh, Jewish socialists as possible because they were a counter-revolutionary movement that tried to destroy what uh, the Russian people had accomplished to some extent. And <clears throat> on top of it all, the dictator of uh, Russia at that time, Stalin and his supporters, they took our leaders and put them into prison and they died. Hmm. So we were attacked by both sides <clears throat> and we lost... Uh, the leadership of the Jewish people. But now, slowly, by a spontaneous generation of the younger generation of Jewish Americans in particular, we are rebuilding a Jewish anti-Zionist movement. And now we have various chapters of the Jewish Bundist movement uh, that are organized now at this. Uh, Dr. Weisfeld, uh, thank you for the uh, detail. I just wanted to uh, clarify this point here, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what I've understood from your uh, uh, you know, words is that in your opinion, Zionism is actually a movement that seeks to establish the state, whereas the Jewish religion, in your opinion, does not believe in the state. Rather, they just they believe that the uh, the 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 Jews they need to live where they're actually in their homelands, wherever they are. For example, if they're living in America, this is their homeland; they have to live there. So they don't 
need to establish a state and Zionism is actually a movement that seeks to actually colonize a type of colonize the Jews in in Palestine and you know restrict them or bound them to a certain place is that is that correct is that what I, what you're trying what, what, what you just said you can begin with that yes all right mm. but there's much, much more to it than that oh yeah definitely so 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 Zionism is actually those people who believe uh, in in the in the in the establishment of the state in the in the state of Israel, right? And and, and it's not necessary that they're Jews. They can be uh, Christians as well, as you just said, right? It's not necessary that they're Jews. Uh, yes and no. I mean, the ideology right. of Zionism insists that the Jewish people actually move uh, hmm. uh, into the into the state there and become you know its loyal subjects and send their children to the military. Right. But hmm. uh, <coughs> but uh, Zionism arose. And uh, at the end of the Holocaust, for, it started off for the reason that they got the support of the Jewish refugees who had nowhere else to go in the world, you know, because right. like my parents were in a Jewish refugee camp after the war. Mm -hmm. And because my father had a sister already living in mm -hmm. Canada who was a citizen, she was able to sponsor my parents so that they could immigrate with a visa into Canada. But 48% mm -hmm. of the Jewish refugees did not have relatives elsewhere who could sponsor them. So they right. couldn't get a visa to go into Canada, the United States, etc. And these countries, <clears throat> they didn't want to help Jewish refugees settle elsewhere. Mm -hmm. they, they couldn't care less about the Jewish people. In fact, they didn't do anything to stop the Holocaust. And these are the right. supposed allies. Now mm -hmm. the, the allies of Israel were the, uh, the ones who uh, allowed the Holocaust to take place or who carried out the Holocaust. It's such mm -hmm. an irony. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Zionism only succeeded because of uh, the imposition of uh, Occidental Western Christian nation state control over the world. And so right. Jews, uh, Jewish refugees ended up going to Palestine because they had nowhere else to go. Then right. the uh, Jewish Arabs, the Mizrahim, came uh, into uh, Israel because they had uh, suffered some discrimination and some uh, attacks uh, in revenge you know, for what the Zionists had done to the Palestinians, even though they were not responsible. And so they ended up leaving thinking that it was going to be a better life. And so they went mm. to Palestine and they formed 70% of the Jewish Israeli population at that time. That's, mm. you know, 70% were Jewish Ara Arabic. Mm. Then right. the Russian uh, Jewish uh, population came, 2 million came and, and uh, because uh, they couldn't, uh, because they had always, you know, been discriminated against, even in uh, supposedly liberated countries such as the USSR. And so they mm. wanted to leave because uh, there, was, uh, uh, there was some, you know, for example, in 1968 in Poland, all of a sudden uh, there was a campaign against all the Jewish people because they were all supposed to be Zionists because Zionism was supposed to represent the Jewish people. Mm. So the Communist Party adopted the definition of the Jewish people by Zionism. Mm. And they didn't, you know, whereas before, you know, Jewish people were supposed to be liberated by, by the uh, communist regime. But it wasn't the case. And so even the Jewish anti-Zionists were expelled from Poland. Hmm. It, it's so sad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Th th thank you, Dr. Uh, Weisfeld. And I think, uh, you know, uh, what I've understood from your, uh, your, your explanation is that uh, you said that majority of the Jews, why they moved to Israel, even though they did not perhaps believe in the state of Israel, they were not Zionists, but they did move because they were discriminated. There were other reasons for that. Is that correct? Yeah. All right, all right. So what about the Zionists? I mean... Let me add. Let me add. The yeah, problem is right. that their children were indoctrinated by the, by the Zionist educational system. All right, right, right. So in other words, the, now the, their children are in fact more influenced by Zionism. So my question is, Dr. Hare, uh, I mean, how did Zionism gain such, a, such an influence? Of course, the political influence that they were able to establish the state. What were actually the reasons? I mean, how were they able to influence such a, such a you know, kind of global, they had an influence on the, you know, global politics, for example. So, I mean, how did they play? What was, I mean, it appears that from your, uh, your, uh, from your views, it appears that they were, they were very few, few people out there. But how did they get such an influence and such a power that they could you know establish a state and the whole world actually all the jews they actually had some way one way or the other they had to follow and they had to move to that state okay 
Um, mm. The power of Zionism does not come from the Jewish people internally. The power right. of Zionism came, first of all, you know, from England with the Balfour Declaration. Right. Then uh, France supplied Israel with nuclear reactor. Then the United States uh, came in and became the main backer, you know, for Zionism. And mm. are financing it militarily for $3.8 billion a year to buy American military goods. So the link between Israel and the military industrial complex of the United States is very close. Mm. And in fact, Israel is an agent of the uh, you know, dominant, you know, uh, uh, Western uh, superpower, the United States of America. So if one goes back, you know, to 1917 with the British occupation at that time, mm. Uh, which uh, uh, took over the, uh, a, a portion of the Ottoman Empire and France took over another portion. <clears throat> hmm. Well, you know, General Allenby, he walked into Jerusalem and said, this is the last crusade, as if the crusaders had won and hmm. will have won for, for all eternity and perpetuity, you know. And then it was transferred over to the control of the Zionists because they couldn't maintain uh, the control themselves uh, because of the dual... Uh, resistance movement to the Palestinians were against the British occupation and the Zionists were also fighting against the British occupation, which was trying to compromise with uh, the uh, Arab uh, population. So uh, when the Zionists, uh, so the Zionists, you know, were transferred the authority by the British occupation and even supported militarily at the time. And uh, this is where they get their, uh, you know, the power from, but not uh, necessarily from the Jewish people. Look, hmm. A majority of the Jewish people don't even live in the Zionist state. Right. Even the right. Americans, there are more Jewish Americans than there are Jewish Israelis because right. they don't right. want to go to live in the Zionist state. They want to stay in the United States of America. That is their homeland. They consider themselves to be Americans, which is good, but they also consider themselves to be Jewish. It's like a dual identity. It doesn't right. fit into the ordinary liberal, you know, bourgeois nation state, you know, paradigm. That doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. But that is the paradigm that is imposed upon the Jewish people by the powers that be to form the Zionist state. And then, you know, the children are indoctrinated and they go and they kill Palestinians because they think that, the, that uh, they're Nazis. And, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, paranoia of, uh, of the uh, anti-Semitic heritage of the West and of Europe mm -hmm. in particular is dropped on the heads of the Palestinians who are not responsible for the treatment of the Jewish people. Now, uh, let me say as yeah, well, yeah, that please. there's comparisons made between the Zionist state and the South Africa state in respect to, let's say, apartheid mm, or yeah. to any other colonial settler project. You know, mm. Israel is similar to the colonial settler projects, but the difference is this is much more complicated because the Jewish people were originally an oppressed nation as well. Although, right. And whereas in the other case, you know, like South Africa, the, the Boers and the, uh, the, the, the white, you know, domination of uh, South Africa was not by a people who were themselves dominated. So the difference is that Zionism took advantage of the, dom of the discrimination and the, the, the murderous history of the mm. West against the Jewish people. They used this to form a state because there was no alternative that for uh, so many Jewish people. So I'm not trying to excuse, you know, what the Zionists have done. I'm just saying they took advantage of the condition of the Jewish people. Yeah, uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, one more thing that, you know, just you just mentioned about, the, of course, the apartheid and all these, you know, uh, the oppression, of course, the occupation, for example, and how Zionists are actually, you know, taking control and they're making use of the oppressed Jews, for example, Jewish people. Uh, my question is then, well, if this is uh, the Jewish people, this is not the Jewish narrative, the, the popular Jewish narrative, as you're just, uh, you know, reiterating, I think. Uh, what do you actually see about the, you know, current situation, for example, or even the past? Like, for example, we had the first uh, Intifada, then we had the second Intifada uh, in response to, for example, the Jewish, uh, the Jewish occupation. Uh, let me talk about the Zionist occupation, I should say. So... Yeah, so so how do you see these things? What about the Jewish narrative? Do these Jewish people also see the Palestinians as oppressed, uh, being victimized by the, uh, you know, the Zionists? And is it, is it the common narrative or is it just the Muslim narrative? Because we see that there are a lot of people who are protesting with the Palestinians, but do they 
also believe and see uh, the the oppression of the Muslims and they, do they acknowledge and realize that this is exactly what what was happening before with the Jews as well and now it's ha being happen it's not being done with the with the Palestinians um, the uh, the Jewish Israeli population if we want to focus on them to see what their attitude is mm. we can see by the polls that 43 percent of the Jewish Israeli population are against the occupation all right. So basically, they're anti-Zionist, but hmm. they're living there. So right. uh, there is a very substantial, very strong opposition to uh, the Zionist occupation of, of uh, at least a part of Palestine. So, uh, and amongst the uh, Jewish Americans, a majority, like hmm. uh, more than 60% are opposed to the occupation. So there is a, a, a great uh, opposition to them, to, the, uh, to what the Zionists are doing in, uh, in Palestine. However, the, uh, the Jewish bourgeoisie, except for Soros, the mm. one exception, you know, the Jewish bourgeoisie supports the Zionist nation state and they finance the whole um, civil society structure of the uh, Jewish Americans and Jewish Canadians, etc. So that all the communal organizations are dominated by Zionists because they have control over the finances of the community. So mm. the Canadian Jewish Congress was actually dissolved because it had a critical position of the Israel government. Mm. And it was replaced by a Zionist organization. So the Zionist uh, you know, control over the Jewish community outside of Israel is very strong as well. And this is the problem. And we have to build up new mm. organizations and set up a new civil society in order to oppose Zionism. Mm. So we have a big task before us and we are in effect carrying out a Jewish revolution against Zionism, not only right. in Palestine, but elsewhere as well. So, uh, all right. So this is uh, what, what I've actually understood from your discussion is and your explanation is that uh, there are people who are actually starting kind of a revolution against it. But because the Zionists, they control the, the, the infrastructure and, of course, the economies, of course, there are certain uh, there are ways they, they, can, they can influence even the normal people. So, uh, but, but my, my, my question is that, of course, uh, you know, the Muslims, they do not much differentiate between the Jew, uh, the Jewish people, the Jewish community that you're actually representing. And at the same time, they do not differentiate between the Zionists. For them, uh, Jewish people are equal, uh, you know, they're equally responsible because they're living there and actually they're being benefited by that. And the Zionists, even though they're controlling, but at the same time, uh, they're being benefited by that. And, uh, you know, so they don't much differentiate between them. So my the reason why I'm asking is this because I want you to actually clarify your stance on on the on the uh, J the Palestinian uh, you know response and the Palestinian, for example, their 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 revolution. Like first, I mentioned for example the first or the second intifada. Uh, what do you understand by that? Do you do you do you support that? Uh, do you do you do the Jewish people believe in that? And they say that well, they de do they have the they do the, have the right to actually you know uh, speak up and you know take the rights uh, that they deserve. Yes, the mm. Palestinian people have a right of self defense, right mm. of uh, auto determination or self determination. They have the right mm. to be independent. They have the right to be free. Hura mm. Palestini, you know we say. Mm. So, um, uh, but uh, the. Uh, the uh, the object hmm. of the revolt of the revolution of the Palestinians in the Intifada is the state and not the people. This right. is a revolution against the domination of a Zionist state. It is hmm. not a revolution. It is not a struggle. It is not a, 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 a an opposition against you know the Jewish Israelis themselves. Because hmm. as we now know, you know, forty three percent are opposed to the occupation. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> the first intifada was 20 years against uh, 20 years after the uh, 1967 occupation of the West Bank. That's why the uh, first intifada took place in 1987, because uh, the occupation was continuing and there was uh, no uh, international uh, opposition to the occupation. So the Palestinian people took it up upon themselves in order to stop the occupation. Hmm. Now, the second intifada uh, in uh, 2001. Uh, was uh, because of the increasing str uh, strength uh, of the uh, the Palestinians in Lebanon with uh, the leadership of Yasser Arafat, 
who incidentally I met in 1980. I, I'm perhaps mm. the first Jewish person to have met and spoken with Yasser Arafat. Right, nice. Because uh, he, he, he knew, uh, he was uh, uh, informed about the work that I was doing in Toronto when we had a Jewish opposition organization. And uh, it was... Uh, it was a first encounter. It wasn't very successful, actually, but nonetheless, we continued to work together. It's, you know, Yasser Arafat was a difficult man to work with, but mm. uh, nonetheless, uh, we worked together, and I was invited to work as a charge d'affaires diplomat with uh, the Palestine Embassy in Ottawa in 1982 when we had to stop the invasion of Lebanon at that time. So there is uh, an increasing... Uh, Jewish opposition to Zionism everywhere. Hmm. Also, inside, you know, uh, the 48 territories of Palestine, there was just this week, there was a demonstration of both uh, Jewish Israeli and Palestinian Israeli who were uh, demonstrating against uh, the continuing uh, militarization of the state. You know, Israel is like a Sparta state, you know, in hmm. ancient Sparta, you know, all the children were raised to wage war. And that was it. You know, that was their reason to exist. And that was their national identity. <laughs> They're very pathetic. You know, this is, you know, what the Zionists bring to bear and impose upon the Jewish people after such a long tradition of a rich cultural and religious experience. And the Zionists come along and they try to destroy that all and turn, you know, the Jewish people into mm. some sort of a Spartan people. This we reject. We cannot accept such, such a uh, uh, assimilation into a Western uh, nation state, uh, militarism and colonialism. No, this is not the Jewish people. This is just Zionism, and we will defeat it. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I think Hamas has uh, a few questions to talk about. Yeah. Uh, yes, Doctor. Doctor, uh, thank you for coming into the show, and I uh, appreciate uh, your discussion with us very much. Um, a, a, mo a very important part of your life uh, uh, is spent in uh, the direct activism with the Palestinian people on ground, right? So... Uh, I want uh, you to tell us some of the uh, any story you have in regards to uh, what you faced with the opposition, on especially ground on ground realities. Yeah. What are the on ground realities in terms of uh, what the daily people face over there uh, in the in their lands, in their farms, um, in their homes? Right. Of course, it's it's real, uh, especially in Gaza. But mm. the opposition, the Palestinian resistance and also the international opposition, which comes to support the popular resistance committees, which I participated right. with. We would go out to demonstrations, uh, mm. like on land day in particular, and the soldiers would be there to stop us from demonstrating because we were maintaining the unity and the uh, revolt of the Palestinians against the occupation, even though we were so weak. But it was working anyway, because... Mm. We were the voice of the Palestinian people, even though they, we were small. And the soldiers, they would come, but they wouldn't shoot live bullets because we were there. The international solidarity uh, uh, right. volunteers were there. And I would f for sure go up to the soldiers and I would speak to them in Yiddish and mm. let them know that I was Jewish, to, mm. to let them know that they were not fighting on behalf of the Jewish people. And I would tell them exactly what they right. were doing, I tell them that they were fighting on behalf of, you know, the United States of America, basically. You know, I, one time I was surrounded by the soldiers and I said, where does that uh, gun that you're carrying come from? And they would say, oh, United States. I'd say, ah, you see, you are an American agent. Do you realize this? And, you know, I would try to sort of, uh, you know, in a subversive way, educate, you know, the soldiers so they would know. But even I was, you know, uh, when I was doing videos, you know, as a journalist, uh, even I was uh, shot with a rubber-coated bullet in the leg because I kicked a canister of gas away from me. And so this was enough for some officer to authorize some soldier to shoot me with a rubber-coated bullet, hit me in the leg. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I was in shock, but I didn't realize it. And, I, and, and, it, uh, and it cost me... Uh, to have a fall two days later. And another time, uh, again, at the Ofer prison when we were demonstrating against the uh, administrative detention of a social worker, uh, mm. Moftar. <clears throat> so uh, we went there and I was again shouting at the soldiers, you know, in Yiddish. And this one soldier came out of the prison with a grenade, a special kind of grenade, a gas grenade, 
uh, rubber ball that bounced, but this one had an exploding head, and he threw it right at me. I was videoing it, and the top exploded, and the, and the top, you know, hit me in the chest. Oh. So they don't care. The Zionists don't care if you're Jewish. For right. them, the only thing that's important is that you're a Zionist, and they will even attack a Jewish person. See, that's the, such a big difference between being a Zionist and being Jewish. So, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Weisfeld, so uh, what we have understood from that is that the Zionists, uh, actually, they don't care, they don't differentiate uh, whether you're Jewish or whether you're Muslim, whether you're Arab or whether you're American, whatever it is, as long as you're not a Zionist, uh, you know, you're, it's like just like uh, either you're with us or against us. It's just like that same theory that they're actually working on with it. Uh, okay, the last question that I would uh, actually bring forward to you is, is uh, uh, what do you see? where this Zionism is going? I mean, what is their future? Because we see they don't have any, you know, boundaries defined. We see that occupation is increasing day by day. We see that, uh, you know, they're increasing their borderlines and whatever. So what is the future of the Zionism? Uh, you know, what is your analysis as a political uh, scientist, as a political scientist, for example? How do you see things going on? Yeah. Without opposition, the Zionists could get much worse. For instance, mm. because there are no internationals, there in Palestine right now, during mm -hmm. this recent you know, upsurge of uh, demonstrations, uh, 17 Palestinians were killed in the West Bank. Right. But if we were there, they would not have been killed. Mm -hmm. So they will try to get away with whatever they can get away with. <laughs> they will kill, they will do anything uh, in order to uh, build up the power of the state uh, if there is no opposition. With our opposition, though, it's an entirely different picture. Because, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, um, the Jewish Israelis are uh, mobilizing now against, uh, against the Zionist state. Here, the opposition of the Jewish movement to the new generation is uh, becoming a majority mainstream movement. And right. uh, we are <clears throat> taking on the Zionist leader, leadership of the Jewish community, and we will defeat them. Right. So uh, the prospects are good for the opposition. Hmm. And uh, I will go back to Palestine as I have uh, lived there, you know, for a number of years, uh, half the year at each time, uh, every year, and I will go back to work with the popular resistance committees and uh, mm. the uh, association in Nablus, where I live, uh, called the Tanwir Palestinian Cultural Enlightenment Forum. And right. there's an excellent group of people there who are working to, to build up the Palestinian civil society, and uh, they do more than even the government does. Doctor, I just wanted to ask you, uh, whilst I was listening to your uh, story, uh, it reminded me of uh, Professor Norman Finkelstein, he was also inspired by his mother to, into activism. But uh, we, we see that with him uh, as an academic, he suffered because of his views. In, in, the, in, the, in the world of academia, people uh, started to write against him. He, he had a lot of trouble. So did you face something similar in your, in your profession? Uh, yes, I was a professor at the York University in Toronto before I went to work for the Palestine Embassy. Uh, because of the war of 1982. Mm -hmm. I was teaching uh, the political economy of Canada-US relations and teaching also a course in political theory. But after I worked uh, at the Palestine Embassy, I was never able to get any teaching again. Okay. So I was, I was boycotted you know, from uh, teaching. And even to finish my PhD thesis, it, it was very difficult. I had to go mm -hmm. to a, another university in Montréal, Quebec, and, and work in French here. Okay. So, uh, and then after my thesis was adopted, uh, accepted by the department, the university administration tried to expel my thesis and I had to go to court and yeah. I won mm -hmm. and, uh, and got my PhD accreditation. But, you know, it was very difficult. You know, okay. so uh, your question okay, is very Okay, so, so uh, what do you think, how have they been able to establish such a... Uh, such a pressure how have they been able to lobby in some place in somewhere like uh, canada and the us where academics can't they don't have academic freedom mm. yes how have they been able to manage this the authorities who who have the power are susceptible to being pressured by the zionists because they're afraid of being criticized for being anti-semitic okay. and most likely right. they are you know yes and the, yes. but the zionists give them a cover mm -hmm. and uh, and so they don't want to uh, you know lose that cover uh, of, uh, of their position mm -hmm. and be accused of anti-Semitism. And so they will do whatever the Zionists you know, tell them to do. 
because they think you know that's the only way to to protect themselves from uh, being charged with anti-semitism so do you do you think that this label of anti-semitism is used to sort of uh, cover the truth maybe or let people not speak up uh, when they have to sometimes but other times it's true of you know, course there's yeah. been a there's been attacks against the Jewish people, especially mm-hmm. from the white supremacist uh, movement yes. in, in the United States, which have attacked synagogues, just mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, Gold, Goldstein, who went into the Ibrahimi mosque and killed yes. 27 worshippers. Yes. You no, know, we even had a condition recently in 2019 in which uh, five of our members were killed in a synagogue in yes. Phoenix, Arizona, yes. uh, together with um, uh, a number of other people because uh, they were celebrating. <clears throat> A, uh, a marriage in, 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 a, uh, in a synagogue in a region that uh, is, uh, even the police are infiltrated by the neo-Nazis there in mm-hmm. Phoenix, Arizona, mm-hmm. in Phoenix and in Glendale, another police department as well. And they killed our members, you mm-hmm. know, and this they can get away with. And because the police didn't report it to the media, the media doesn't want to believe it either. It's very mm-hmm. difficult, you know, uh, condition here for Jewish people, okay. you know, who are not Zionists, because we're not protected by the Zionist establishment. We are let, uh, you know, left uh, you know, al- alone to, to be killed by neo-Nazis and the Zionists don't even care. Mm. So this is the, uh, the condition, the real uh, on the ground, you know, condition of Jewish people. Okay, okay so uh, doctor, um, I wanted to ask you about Gaza as well. Uh, have you ever been there? And if you have, what is the situation like on the ground? And how do you think uh, what the what what does the uh, or what does the future look like with regards to the people of Gaza? And just in another question, I'll add to it because it's relevant, and then inshallah you can answer both questions. I remember in two thousand eight, end of two thousand eight, and beginning of two thousand nine, Israel had the operation cast lead on Gaza, uh, and I remember following that operation, and it was it was much they 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 did much more damage than they did this time around, uh, such that, you know, Norman Finkelstein wrote a book uh, called This Time We Went Too Far. How do you see the events of 2008 and then in 2021, uh, how do you think it's changed or how is it similar? Has it become worse or is it becoming uh, difficult for Israel to, you know, uh, keep on this assault? You're right. Israel is having more difficulty politically to uh, be able to... uh continue to uh, batter the Palestinian people whenever they are opposed by even the most minimal use of force. And mm-hmm. they will disproportionately attack the Palestinians in return. You know, General Sharon, he used to have a ratio. See, yes. For any uh, of his uh, uh, own losses, he would uh, take 100 Palestinian Palestine. lives or Lebanese lives in exchange, you know. Uh, he didn't care if he was losing his own people. He was he was called the the butcher of. Uh, he, he's got a title as well. Is it is, is that true? Yes, the butcher of Palestine. Yes, the butcher of Palestine. Yes. yes. So he would take one hundred lives in ex, in re- return, you know, for losing any one life of his yeah. uh, of his side. Now it has been reduced to like twenty to one, yeah. mm-hmm. and this was because of the international pressure. Pressure, and yes. not from the uh, Western uh, Occidental states necessarily. No, it's from the popular opposition, which force their governments to state mm. something, you know, in opposition to Zionism. Now, mm. Biden you know, is, is obliged to, to, uh, to back off of his initial 100% endorsement, you know, of Israel's campaign against Gaza and Hamas. So now yes. he has to say something, you know, that is uh, human for, mm. on behalf of the Palestinian, humane on behalf of the Palestinian people because of the popular pressure and because in particular the pressure from the young Jewish opposition as well, mm-hmm. which expose him for being a Zionist and not for opposing racism. So yes, it is, uh, it is better now than it was before. And it's because of the opposition. And just touching on the question, whether you've been there and what was your experience like, if you have? Uh, it's very difficult to get into Gaza. You need a permit, yeah. you know, from the Zionist state and you need a permit from Hamas as well to get into Gaza. Okay. So I have enough work to do in Nablus and around Nablus. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so uh, and I let others, but for internationals to get into Gaza, it's very difficult. It's a bit better, you know, for journalists. But even mm-hmm. then, you know, <clears throat> the uh, big uh, journalist uh, agencies like Associated Press have to hire a local Palestinian in order mm-hmm. to do the uh, 
the reporting because you know they can't mm. get you know international journalists to come in there. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the for coming to the show, and it was really nice. And hopefully, we'll have a discussion again. Thanks a lot. And I thank you. आप लोगों ने डिस्कशन सुनी डॉक्टर इब्राहिम वाइस वर्ल्ड की और मैं चाह रहा हूँ कि हम इस पर थोड़ा सा मैं आपका खास तौर पर हमास भाई आपकी इसमें इन शाला कुछ तबसरा लेना चाह रहा हूँ अच्छा सो आपकी ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या है यानी अभी हमने जो खुलासा इसका पूरा मैं समझता हूँ कुछ वर्ड्स के अंदर मैं बयान कर दूँ एक तो ये कि इनके नज़दीक जायनिज़म को जूश जो पीपल से डिफ्रेंशिएट करना चाहिए जायनिस्ट और इनके बकौल डॉक्टर इब्राहिम के जो एंटी जायनिज़म का जो नरेटिव है वो बहुत ज़्यादा कॉमन और पॉपुलर है यूज़ में हम मुसलमानों के अंदर ये इतना कॉमन नहीं कॉमन नहीं है वाई डू यू थिंक यानी एक तो उनकी बात है कि एक हमारा वो डू यू थिंक कि मुसलमान इनको डिफ्रेंशिएट नहीं करते जायनिज़म और यूज पीपल में उसकी क्या रीज़न है अच्छा सबसे पहले मैं आपको ज़रा ये हिस्ट्री बताना चाहूँगा कि मेरा एक कॉन्टेक्ट किस तरह हुआ डॉक्टर के साथ ये तकरीबन दस साल पहले की बात है कि ऑनलाइन जो है जब फ़लस्तीन का इशू था तो हम ऑनलाइन होते थे डिस्कशन करते थे देखते थे तो वहाँ पर मेरा फ़र्स्ट टाइम जो है ना मैं एक ऐसे ग्रुप में था जिसमें मैं रिसर्च करना चाह रहा था देखना चाह रहा था जूस जूश पीपल के बारे में कि ये क्या चक्कर है इसराइल के बारे में तो वहाँ पर मेरी इंट्रैक्शन हुई कुछ लोगों से जो कि जूश थे ठीक है ना और वो उन्होंने ये एंटी जैनिस स्लोगन लेके बैठे हुए थे यानी उनका पूरा गेटअप जो है वो एक जूश पर्सन का था और ये था और उसके बावजूद ना जब वो मैंने देखा कि उन्होंने इस तरह के स्लोगन्स पकड़े हुए हैं फ़लस्तीन का फ्लैग फ़लस्तीन का झंडा उन्होंने पकड़ा हुआ है और ये वो सारी चीज़ें जब ये मेरे लिए एक शौक था मैंने कहा ये क्या अजीब बात है तो फिर वहाँ पर जब मैंने ऑनलाइन इंट्रैक्ट किया फेसबुक पे तो मुझे लोगों ने कुछ ने रिस्पॉन्ड किया और दे वर वेरी ईगर विलिंग के हमारी वॉइस जो है ना यहाँ पर रिप्रेजेंट हो इन रिकॉर्ड्स टू के यहाँ पर ऐसे लोग भी हैं जो कि यहूदी हैं लेकिन वो फ़लस्तीन के हक में बोलते हैं और इसराइल को वो नहीं मानते और डॉक्टर इब्राहिम जो है वो सिर्फ एक ग्रुप में से हैं जो कि एंटी जाइनिस नरेटिव के हैं आप देख सकते हैं कि इन्होंने बताया कि इनकी जो मूवमेंट बुंदिस मूवमेंट जो है वो एक सोशलिस्ट मूवमेंट है सेकुलर जूस की है ठीक है ना और जो दूसरे हैं इनके अलावा इनके अलावा ऑर्थोडॉक्स हैं जो कि फुली रिलीजियस हैं ठीक है और वो अपने टेक्स्ट की बेसिस पे जस्टिफाई करते हैं जैसे न्यू न्यूट्रिकार्टा एक ग्रुप है ठीक है एक और ग्रुप है उसका नाम है ट्रू तोरा ट्रू तोरा जूस ठीक है और ये ज़्यादातर अमेरिका में पाए जाते हैं ठीक है ना दूसरा इन्होंने इस नरेटिव से फिर हमें ये इन्होंने ज़ाहिर किया कि देखें जायनिज़म जो है ना एक पोलिटिकल आइडियोलॉजी है और इसके पीछे कुछ आप कह लें कि प्रोटेस्टेंट क्रिश्चियन हैं इनके बकौल जो काम कर रहे हैं जो काम कर रहे हैं और अगर वो शुरू में अगर क्रिश्चियन थे तो कुछ ने कहा कुछ नरेटिव देते हैं कि ये और सेक्युलर पावर्स थी जिनका पॉलिटिकल रीजंस की वजह से जो है ये इनको लेके आना चाहते थे अब भाई मैं यहाँ पे एक आपसे एक सवाल करना चाहता हूँ मैं चाह रहा हूँ आप इस पर थोड़ी सी अपनी राय दें Uh, हमारे हम मुसलमानों के यहाँ यानी अगर जिस तरीके से ये बता रहे हैं डॉक्टर अब्राहम अगेन ये बड़ी वो चीज़ें बयान कर रहे हैं जो जाहिर है उनका अपना नरेटिव है वी डो नॉट हंड्रेड परसेंट वी डो नॉट वी डो नॉट नीड टू एक्चुअली हंड्रेड परसेंट एग्री विद इन मेरा सवाल ये है कि हम मुसलमान हमारा तो ये नरेटिव हम तो फ़र्क नहीं करते जायनस में और यहूदियों में यानी जो जूश पीपल जो जूश कम्यूनिटी की ये बात कर रहे हैं मेरा सवाल ये है कि क्या आपकी यानी रिसर्च के मुताबिक क्या जो पैलेस्टीनियन अरब्स हैं आपकी इंट्रैक्शन हुई होंगी इंग्लैंड में और दूसरे ममालिक में क्या उनका भी वो भी डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं या वो भी आम कॉमन मुस्लिम नरेटिव के की तरह वो इन दोनों में डिफ्रेंशिएट नहीं करते और इनको एक ही समझते हैं देखिए मुगर भाई अगर तो हम थियोलॉजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से देखें ना अकीदे के एस्पेक्ट से एज बिलीवर्स तो there is no difference between a someone who's a, a zionist Jew and someone who's a zionist zionist Jew. difference in this mm. yeah mm. some a, a Jew follows the ideology of zionism mm. obviously agar hum usko objectively dekhenge to hum shayad kahenge ke zionist jo hai wo zyada bura hai kyunki wo uh, zulm aur uske jo mm. jo uska idea hai wo ground realities mein zulm mein create hota hai mm. theek hai to theological point of view se क्योंकि थियोलॉजी का थियोलॉजी में तो सिर्फ हम 
مسلم نان مسلم ڈفرینشیشن ہوتی ہے پھر اللہ تعالیٰ نے ہمیں نصارہ کے بارے میں کرسچنس کے بارے میں بتایا اور پھر یہودیوں کے بارے میں بتایا تو وہ تھیولوجیکل ایسپیکٹ تو ہمارا وہ کلیئر ہے اس میں تو کوئی پرابلم نہیں ہے جب آپ یہ پالیٹکس کے اندر آتی ہیں اور اس خاص طور پہ اس ایشو کے اندر پیلسٹینین اینڈ اسرائیلی کانفلکٹ جو ہے اس کے اندر آتے ہیں تو پھر ہمیں ڈفرینشیٹ کرنا چاہیے کیوں کیونکہ جو اینٹی زائنسٹ جوز کرسچنس اور نان مسلمس ان جنرل ہیں وہ ایک اس کانفلکٹ کا حل بھی ہو سکتے ہیں وہ کیونکہ آواز اٹھا رہے ہیں آپریشن کے اگینسٹ تو ہمیں ان کو ایک پولیٹیکل اسٹینڈ پوائنٹ سے سپورٹ کرنے میں اتنا کوئی حرج نہیں ہونی چاہیے دیکھیں ایک اور چیز یہ ہے کہ انہی کی آوازوں کی وجہ سے آپ دیکھیں یہ پہلے جو ہے پاپولر نیگیٹو انہی کی ایفرٹس کی وجہ یعنی یہ مکس ایفرٹس کی وجہ سے ہوا ہے کیونکہ اب دیکھیں اگر آپ آن لائن دیکھیں نا سب کے سامنے نا یہ نیوٹری کارٹا کا نام آ رہا ہے ٹھیک ہے کیونکہ وہ کیونکہ یہ ایک قسم کے فیور میں یوز ہو رہا ہے یعنی کمینڈیبل ایفرٹس ہیں ان کے دیکھیے میں نے جو ان سے سوال بھی کیا تھا نا کہ دو ہزار آٹھ میں اور دو ہزار اکیس میں کیا فرق ہے اگر کسی نے دو ہزار آٹھ کے ایونٹس کو فالو کیا نا کلوزلی تو وہ بہت بڑا ڈفرینس دیکھ سکتا ہے بہت بڑا ڈفرینس دیکھ سکتا ہے کہ اسرائیل نے اس دفعہ جو کیا ہے اٹ از ناٹ ایون ہاف آف جو انہوں نے دو ہزار آٹھ میں کیا تھا پھر انہوں نے ایریل شرون کی مثال دی کہ وہ اس کا ذہن میں کیا فگرز ہوتے تھے کہ اگر ایک ہمارا یہودی مار رہا ہے یا ایک ہمارا اسرائیلی مار رہا ہے تو ہم سو ان کے ماریں گے اور یہ ہوتا تھا یہ باقاعدہ ایسکلیٹ کرتے تھے جیسے مطلب ایک راکٹ آیا تو یہ لوگ پھر ایسکلیٹ کر کے سو سے زیادہ مارتے تھے اب وہ سچویشن نہیں ہے کیا وجہ اس کی کیوں نہیں ہے اس ایکٹیویزم کی وجہ سے اور ایک دفعہ پہلے بھی ہم نے بات کی تھی کہ یہ لابینگ جو ہے اور ایکٹیویزم جو ہے اس کا فرق پڑتا ہے اس کا فائدہ ہوتا اس کا مسلمانوں کو فائدہ ہے جیسے یہ خود بھی کہہ رہے تھے نا کہ ہم جب نہیں فلسطینیوں کو فائدہ ہے جب ہاں آج جب ہم ہوتے تھے فلسطینیوں کو فائدہ ہی ہے جب ہم ہوتے ہیں ان کا جیسے کہنا ڈاکٹر ابراہم یہی کہہ رہے تھے نا کہ جب ہم ہوتے ہیں آگے جاتے ہیں تو وہ لائف بلٹس نہیں چلاتے پر آ جاتے ہیں لیکن اگر ہم نہ ہوں تو وہ باقاعدہ لائف بلٹ کیا وجہ اس کی کیونکہ انٹرنیشنل کمیونٹی کا کوئی بندہ اگر مرے گا تو یہ نیوز میں جائے گا انٹرنیشنل نیوز میں جائے گا پیلسٹینین کی نیوز کو انہوں نے کیپ کیا ہوا ان کو تو کنٹرول کرتے ہیں مسلمانوں سے ان کو ویسے بھی اتنا خوف نہیں کہ مسلمان ان کے بارے میں جو بھی نیگیٹو رکھیں مگر میں آپ کو بتاؤں یہ یہ بھی جو ہے نا بات کہ وہ جیسے انہوں نے آپ کو ہمیں مسالے بھی دی نا کہ ان کو بھی ربر بلٹ ماری اور ان کو بھی ایک کوئی کینسٹر لگا ان کے چیسٹ کے اندر ایک لڑکی تھی جو بڑی پیلسٹینین ایکٹیوسٹ تھی ریچل کوری اس کا نام تھا اس کو انہوں نے میرے خیال بلڈوزر کے نیچے کر دیا تھا تو یو نو یہ بھی نہیں ہے کہ وہ انٹرنیشنل کمیونٹی کو بالکل کچھ نہیں کہتے کچھ کو تو انہوں نے قتل بھی کیا اور وہ بھی ہمارے پاس مثالیں ہیں مگر میں آپ کو بتاؤں میں ان کی باتیں سن رہا تھا نا تو مجھے نا قرآن کی ایک آیت یاد آئی انہوں نے کہا آپ نے خاص طور پہ جب پوچھا نا کہ یہ زائنسٹ کے پاس اتنی زیادہ پاور کیسے آئی کہ انہوں نے ورلڈ اسٹیج کے اوپر ایک ملک نکال لیا اور یو نو انہوں نے یو نو گلوبل پالیٹکس کو ایک طرح سے چینج کر دیا تو انہوں نے کہا کہ یہ ان کی اپنی آرگینک پاور نہیں ہے ان کو برٹش نے سپورٹ کیا ان کو فرینچ نے سپورٹ کیا فرینچ نے نیوکلیئر ریئیکٹرز دیے ان کو اور آج ان کو امریکہ سپورٹ کر رہا ہے تو میرے ذہن میں سورہ عالم ران کی آئے تھی بری بت علیہ مدل تو عین ماسقیفو اللہ بے حبل من اللہ و حبل من النس کہ اللہ تعالیٰ نے کہا کہ ان کو جو ہے نا ذلت اور رسوائی جو ہے ان کو دنیا میں ان کے اوپر آئی سوائے اس کے جب کہ انہوں نے اللہ تعالیٰ کی مدد سے یا لوگوں کی مدد سے اس ذلت سے ہی نکل آئے تو ابھی بھی حبل من الناس جو ہے نا وہ قائم ہے ابھی قائم ہے ورنہ ان آف دم سیلز دے آر ویری ویک ایک تو یہ بات دوسری بات جو امپورٹنٹ ہے نا وہ اور بہت امپورٹنٹ بات انہوں نے کی کہ جو زائنسٹ نیگیٹو کی جو اصل ہے نا اسی میں کوئی ہوا نہیں ہے یعنی وہ کہتے ہیں یہ ہمارا پرامسڈ لینڈ ہے یہ ہمارا پرامسڈ لینڈ ہے ایز اے ریلیجیس نیشن دس ہیز بین پرامس ٹو اس انہوں نے کیا کہا انہوں نے کہا نہیں اس کا ریلیجن کے ساتھ تعلق نہیں ہے اسپیشلی موسا علیہ السلام جو تھے وہ جب فراؤن سے اللہ تعالیٰ نے فراؤن سے ان کو بچایا اور بنی اسرائیل کو بچایا تو وہ سینائی ڈیزرٹ کے ڈیزرٹ کے اندر ان کو چالیس سال تک جی وہ اس خطے میں تو تھے ہی نہیں سینائی ڈیزرٹ آج جو ہے ایجپٹ کا حصہ ہے بالکل اور ڈیزرٹ ہے وہ تو انہوں نے یہ چیز کلیئر کی اور بڑی اچھی کلیئر کی ہے کہ اس جو ان کا جو بیسس آف دیر آرگیومنٹ ہے نا وہی فلاڈ ہے کہ یہ ہمارا لینڈ نہیں ہے ہاں لینڈ نہیں ہے دیکھیں نا مسلمانوں کا ک
یہی بات کی کہ جو ایسٹرن یورپین جوز تھے اشکنازی جوز جن کو کہتے ہیں اور اشکنازی جوز کو کافی زیادہ فیور کیا گیا اسرائیل وغیرہ کے اندر بھی اشکنازی جوز جو تھے وہ چاہتے تھے کہ ادھر ہی رہیں اور جو فار ایگزامپل اسپینش جوز تھے اسپین میں رہنا چاہتے تھے ایتھوپین جوز ایتھوپیا میں رہنا چاہتے تھے مگر ان کو پریشرائز کیا یا جو بھی ٹیکٹک یوز کی ہوگی اللہ تعالیٰ عالم تو وہ ان کو یہاں لے کے آئے اور انہوں نے اس میں بتایا بھی کہ ہماری لینگویج بھی انہوں نے یہ ڈش کیسے ختم کی تو یہ ان کا یو نو اچھا ان کے ساتھ گفتگو ہوئی مجھے بھی سیکھنے کو ملا اسپیشلی میرے مجھے مجھے یہ نہیں پتا تھا کہ اسرائیلی جوز میں فورٹی تھری پرسینٹ بکال ان کے کہ پولس کہتے ہیں ہمیں کہ فورٹی تھری پرسینٹ آر اگینسٹ تو میرے ذہن میں یہ سوال آ رہا تھا میں نے سوچا تھا ان کو پوچھوں گا کہ اگر اسرائیل زائنزم کے انہوں نے کہا تھا کہ دے آر ان فیور اگینسٹ دس پلسٹینین آکوپیشن یہ ہے وہ زائنزم ہی ہو گیا نا اور اتنا پاپولر نیرٹو یہ ہے اگین دا کوشچن از کہ اس کا اتنا انفلوئنس نہیں ہے کیوں اتنا انفلوئنس نہیں ہے اس کا اتنا امپیکٹ نہیں ہے اکارڈنگ ٹو دم دے ہیو یو نو انفراسٹرکچر پہ ان کا کنٹرول ہے اکنامکس پہ ان کا کنٹرول ہے لیکن جب اسٹارٹ ہوا تھا تب تو نہیں تھا نا تو بکال ان کے ان کا نیرٹو جو ہے وہ ان کا نیرٹو تو یہ ہے کہ انہوں نے جو آپریشن تھی جو اس کو اور اس میں انٹی سیمیٹزم کو بھی انہوں نے یوز کیا اپنے حق میں ابھی بھی کر رہی ہے ہالوکاسٹ کو بھی یوز کیا انہوں نے یوز کیا سنگل سنگ کی کتاب ہے دا ہالوکاسٹ انڈسٹری اس کی کتاب کا وہ تھیسس ہے نا وہ یہی ہے کہ انہوں نے ہالوکاسٹ کو یوز کیا ہے اسٹیٹ کی کریشن کے اسٹیٹ کریشن کے لیے سو اگین ہم آس پائی واٹ ڈو یو تھنک کہ currently do they do they still have that power kya aapke nazdeek do do they still have that influence kya ye abhi itni zuban itni jo abhi 43% jaise unka claim hai 43% jo hai wo log aur is tarah khaas taur pe ye kehte hain majority jews jo hain wo israel se zyada jo hain america aur dusre mulk countries dusre countries mein aur wo inke khilaf bol rahe hain for example acha main what do you what do you see the future acha main is bare mein na doctor se thoda sa disagree karunga ڈاکٹر از سیمنگ اے لٹل مور آپٹمسٹک ٹھیک ہے آئی ڈونٹ نو وائی لیکن مجھے یہ چیزیں ابھی اس طرح نظر نہیں آ رہی مجھے لگ رہا ہے کہ ابھی بھی ان کے پاس زیادہ پاور ہے ابھی بھی ان کے پاس زیادہ انفلوئنس ہے ٹھیک ہے اور کچھ اس طرح کی ورلڈ ورلڈ پالیٹکس میں کچھ بندے اکٹھے ہو رہے ہیں جو اپنی ویٹو کو یوز کر کر کے ابھی بھی ویٹو انہوں نے یوز کی اور وہ دوبارہ جو ہے وہ اس کو کنٹینیو رکھنے کے بائی فورس اب جتنا کیونکہ انہیں یہ بلیک اینڈ وائٹ سسٹم ہوگا نا اتنی زیادہ وہ وارفیئر اور فورس کی طرف آئے گی ٹھیک ہے اب اس کے دو آؤٹ کم ہو سکتے ہیں آئیدر ڈیزاسٹرس ہوگا کیونکہ وہ وار فیئر والا یا پھر یہ ہوگا کہ پھر ایک آدھ ان کو گو ان کرنا پڑے گا انٹرنیشنل پریشر کے ہاں اور وہ ایک سائڈ پہ لے لیں گے ہمیں پتہ کہ جو لیفٹس لبرل نیرٹو ہے وہ دراصل پیلسٹائن کے فیور میں ہے آج کل اور وہ اس طرح یہ ہے کہ وہ ایونچولی میں بھی اس کو ان کو سپریس کرنے میں کامیاب ہو جائے لیکن آپ دیکھیں بہت کم ویوز ہیں ٹھیک ہے اور ایون تو بہت سگنیفکینٹ رہے ہیں آن گراؤنڈ یہ ٹھیک ہے لیکن آپ کہہ لیں کہ سوشل میڈیا پریزنس کے لحاظ سے میں ہم تو صرف سوشل میڈیا پریزنس کے لحاظ سے بات کر سکتے ہیں وہ اتنا زیادہ ان کا نہیں ہے اس طریقے سے تنویر کے بارے میں جو بات کر رہے تھے اس کے بارے میں بھی سوشل میڈیا پہ آپ کو کچھ نہیں ملتا ان کی ایک ویب سائٹ ہے اس کے اوپر بھی زیادہ ڈیٹیلس نہیں ہے بہت یہ نہیں پتہ چلتا کہ کمیونٹیز کون بیسکلی پیلسٹینین کمیونٹیز کلچر کو یہ کر رہے ہیں اس میں کون لوگ ہیں کون اس کو مطلب زیادہ انفارمیشن اویلیبل نہیں ہے بٹ اگین آئی تھنک لیٹس ہوپ فار دا بیسٹ ان شاء اللہ ایک اور بات ابھی تک میں جس کے بارے میں کنفیوز ہوں جہاں تک میرا پرائر انڈرسٹینڈنگ تھی نا میری یہی تھی کہ جو زیادہ تر جوز ہیں وہ اسرائیل میں ہیں ٹھیک ہے اور زیادہ تر جو مطلب یعنی خود کئی ولنگلی جو ہے نا وہ دوسرے ملکوں سے وہ اسرائیل کے اندر آئے تھے ٹھیک ہے نیرٹو یہ ہے کہ فورس کی یہ حالات کی وجہ سے نہیں نہیں آپریشن اور یہ ان کا نیرٹو ٹھیک ہے انہوں نے کہا کہ انہوں نے اس طرح کا انوائرمنٹ کریٹ کیا سوشو پالیٹیکل انوائرمنٹ کیا گیا پروپرگینڈا کیا جس کے تھرو آئے اور وہ ٹھیک ہے بات ٹھیک ہے لیکن بس ان ریکارڈس ٹو کہ میجورٹی کدھر ہیں جوز وہ میرے خیال سے وہ اسرائیل میں ہی ہیں دیکھا جائے اے جی جزاک اللہ خیر آئی تھنک لیٹس کنکلیوڈ دا سیشن ہیئر اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو اب ہم سب مسلمانوں کی حفاظت کرے اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو جو فتنے ہیں خاص طور پہ جنگ اور اس طریقے سے اپریشن ظلم اور زیادتی اس سے بچائے اللہ تعالیٰ ہمارے مسلمان بھائی فلسطینیوں کی مدد کرے اور 
ہم سب دعا کرتے ہیں خاص طور پہ اس ان حالات میں ان دنوں میں کہ اللہ تعالیٰ ہمیں جو ہے مسلمانوں کو یونائٹ کرے تاکہ ہم مل کے جو ہے اس ظلم کے خلاف آواز اٹھا سکیں تو جزاک اللہ خیر انشاءاللہ ملتے ہیں السلام علیکم و اللہ وبرکاتہ